In Britain, a network of special cameras that automatically read number plates is monitoring every single vehicle on our roads. Near Hastings in East Sussex, an alert from one of them has sparked the traffic cops into action. Right, could you also call Ops 1 and uh, give them a heads up? Uh, we got a call on the radio that a stolen vehicle had activated the ANPR cameras in Kent, southbound on the 21. That's half a mile north of where we were. As I'm pulling in and turning round to get a view of the road, the van went past us. We're just into Hurst Green now. PC Neil McGregor's been a cop for nearly 30 years, but there's nothing old school about him. He loves the new technology. It's like having 10 policemen out spotting. The old way of doing things before AMPR was, you know, you get policemen out there in plain clothes and they go out and spot for you and do things. And, and this is now instantaneous. And you actually know you've got something rather than having to think, mm, is that worth stopping because it doesn't look right? You actually know you've got something. Very here, mate. And McGregor's definitely got something here. It's just a matter of getting in front of the van in order to stop it. Luckily, the driver just ahead of the red car has no idea he's been caught on ANPR camera. But there's a problem. PC McGregor's left too much of a gap, and the white van man, having seen it's the cops, has gone for it. Yep, southbound, uh, he's aware of us. Um, turning right, right. Now westbound, out of 265, towards jet. The right turn could just be the wrong turn for the van thief. Because we knew that further along that road, we had a tactical option of actually using a stop stick. The stop stick spikes will puncture the van's tires as long as McGregor's colleagues, who are taking a shortcut, can get in front of it in time. Speed is now 4 5. Yeah, he's just done an overtake on a double white line into a blind bend. The reckless driver's risking it all to get away. High speed chases on country roads are potentially fatal. Yeah, now behind the BW Golf uh, overtake on coming traffic. We have one hotel thank you, unit behind us. Uh, we're in a national speed limit at the moment. Again, light traffic. Uh, speed is uh, seven five miles per hour. No six mile hour zone. The van's speed is increasing, but there's no real danger of it outrunning the cops. You're not chasing a high performance car here. You're chasing a Nissan midi van. <laughs> but it still has to be stopped. Fortunately, the cops have an ace up their sleeve, or more precisely, behind a hedge. Approaching you now, approaching you now. McGregor's colleagues with the stop stick. But it's not a direct hit. The cops aren't yet out of the woods. The thief's still going and getting more and more desperate. All you try and do is just um, keep it calm. That might be easier said than done if the cop's last trick doesn't come off. Hemming the van in with every vehicle they've got. Go, one, go, uh, go, 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 go. That uh, stop stick has worked um, on at least one tyre, at least one tyre. Moving for a box, now, by. In the end, the opportunity presented itself and everything went right. If that had got away, my life wouldn't be worth living. Yeah. New technology, like the ANPR camera, is leading the way in the fight against lawbreakers. So are elite squads, like the unit PC McGregor and his partner PC Alan Gardner belong to. We are entirely intelligence-led. We get tasked as to where they feel we ought to go and what we should be targeting. 
They're force-wide troubleshooters, taking on any criminal activity connected with the roads. It can be anything from uh, a series of burglaries in a rural area, which is like needle and haystack work, down to sitting waiting for one individual, which we know is coming. It's just such an individual that Gardner and McGregor have been tasked to take out this morning in Brighton. He's a prolific drug dealer who PC Gardner caught and arrested in a black Saab around here once before. When we started getting intelligence coming back again, that this Saab was suspected of being active still. He was on a daily basis um, doing his, his trade. I was quite keen to get him again. The lowdown is that the man is dealing his drugs around Brighton's east side car parks. We'd swept the car parks either two or three times. Um, and as we were coming back down uh, Whitehawk Road to Eastern Road, he came out of Eastern Road into Whitehawk Road. The cop's resolve has paid off. <laughs> The okay, guy's got the vehicle out the road northbound um, at the eastern end of Eastern Road Sea. So we just had to spin it round in the junction and go after him. The cops are readying themselves for another pursuit. I'm just taking the priority here potentially because it might wake up. Whitehawk Road, going northbound, behind Yankee 619, November Lincoln Hotel, the Black Side of This is not the time or the place for a pursuit, if they can help it. Stop it here, Finden Road. Yes, yes, sir. Uh... But merely the sound of the police siren is enough this time. He's not even bothering to pull over. It's probably one of the, the strangest stops I've ever had, because immediately the blue lights went on, he stopped, he was ready. He opened the driver's door and he actually put his arms out on the door so that we could see his hands. And I thought that really odd, because I've never had anybody do that in all of my service. Put it in your mouth, mate. Last time we stopped, you had drugs in your vehicle, OK? It was almost as though he was expecting us. That's yeah. fine. fine. OK. Okay, you've been detained for a drug search. It's made all out, mate. The reason I'm stopped okay. is you've been in recent activity where this vehicle has been seen as a okay. Is there any, anything in the vehicle at all now? No, nothing. Nothing at all. How have you been? I've been fine. Good lads. You still on bail? Oh, yes, I am. Mate. Okay, and what's, what's going on with that? When's uh, that in court? I go back on the uh, 20th, 20th of next month. Can we join him up at the yeah. car? Yeah. I was Done. stopped just the other day. Were you? Yeah, Saturday. Okay, it's just another day at the office for the suspected dealer, Colin Wesley. <laughs> OK, stay there. Absolutely cool as a cucumber. Uh, he actually said to me, I hope this isn't going to take long because I've got things to do. Don't mind if I open up a window a little bit? No. Leave the store open, mate. OK. <laughs> Check at the man. Um, I'd met Mr Wesley before. On that occasion, he, he did have drugs on him. Sorry, Is he yeah. still in where, then? Uh, or she moved over? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, think, I think she's at her mother's moment. Yeah? Yeah. OK. Yeah. Cool. He was exactly the same last time. He was totally cool all the way through the stop, very friendly. He's a, quite an amicable person. To be honest, he doesn't look like the archetypal drug dealer. But the cops know better, and they know he's ingenious at stashing his wares. Yeah, under the line in. The last time it was in Just here. there, yeah, those bits here. How's he seem? How's he sort of behaving himself? It's the same as it was last time. He seems cool as a cucumber until we find it. Yeah. Aha! Aha could be the discovery they've been hoping for. There's a pocket on the front of the Saab seat, and in that pocket is the wallet. Uh, now, dealers always wrap their money in exactly the same way. They always do it in hundreds, and one of the 20s folds over the other four. So they can very easily count. Probably over 700 quid. Whilst there's no sign of any drugs on this occasion, the cops are pretty sure all the money is from peddling drugs. Until Wesley can explain where he's got so much cash from, he's committing a criminal offence. It's called money laundering. Listen, mate, 
Um, unfortunately, I'm going to be arresting you on this time on suspicion of, uh, of laundering money. You didn't have to say anything. Money. Yeah, you didn't have to say anything. We may harm your defence. I was carrying over £600 yeah. in cash. I appreciate it. However much you, you try not to, you can't detract from the fact that he has previously been arrested and it's within your knowledge that he's previously been arrested for drug dealing and you're immediately thinking it's got to be coming from drugs. Yeah, money laundering is, uh, is about a thousand pounds, isn't it? He said, oh, you can't nick me for that. You can't nick me for money laundering for that because it's less than a thousand pounds. I know about this. And the downside for him is they had changed the law and yes, we could. <laughs> A short distance away, across Brighton, traffic bobbies are also taking advantage of a recent change in the law, one that now allows the cops to take people's cars off them and have them crushed. Ooh! And one and one that URC is coming out to play. If it's not road legal, then it's very bad timing for the driver of the escort that's pulled out in front of them. PC Dane Goddard is ruthless. I love taking cars off people. I love taking the cars off people because I have to have a full license, I have to be insured to be on the road and I have to pay my way to keep my car on the road and if someone else can't do it, that's the part of the job I absolutely love. <laughs> the flashing red sign on Goddard's onboard computer screen affirms it's the escort driver's unlucky day. No oh yeah! I've been hit by an uninsured driver and it's the most frustrating thing in the world because it has to come out of my pocket. And I'm sure everyone else has been hit by an uninsured driver or a person without a licence or anything like that. You're having to pay out of your insurance to cover the cost of the damage to your car when it wasn't your fault. Ah, uh, should do some checks. BN2 4th. Running vehicle checks has never been easier for the traffic cops thanks to new technology in their cars. Hello, uh, so my colleagues just coming around to have a chat. Okay. The mobile data terminal, or MDT, accesses information about cars and their drivers instantaneously. Like ANPR cameras, the data terminals have transformed the traffic cop's job. The best thing in the world. You just ask them to come and join you in the car, get all their details, I and mean, in five minutes you know if they're known to the police, you know who they are, you know if they've got a driving licence, you know the vehicle, who the registered keeper is, and the insurance, and if it's MO MOT'd. It is a superb piece of kit. The kit makes picking up illegal motors a doddle, but unfortunately in some cases, insurance data still has to be verified before they can take away someone's pride and joy. Yeah, it's a routine stop check. Using the good old dog and bone. So we've got a vehicle stopped at the side of the road, states he's insured with the AA, but he shows uninsured on the national database. At the scene of the drug stop, the cops haven't given up hope of finding drugs hidden in the suspected dealer's Saab. They've brought in a specialist, a good old dog called Jess. We've done the physical search on the vehicle. Now, is it a case of he's actually bringing a bulk load of drugs over here, or is he actually going to buy a bulk load of drugs? And what we want to find is the hide. And the only way to find the hide, if you can't physically find it yourself, is to get the drugs dog in. My search dog is trained to find cash, firearms and drugs. Um, as soon as I heard that money laundering was involved as well, it was a kind of double whammy really, so we had to double the chance of finding something really. Already, Jess has got a sniff of something. There is a cellophane wrapper behind it. Since yeah, that's some sort of foam uh, in it, though. Foam. It sounds dead and it's one inside. All right, OK. Those. She gave me a lot of interest there, so it might have been somewhere that he's hidden before. On the outside of the car, obviously, I have to, be, I have to do things on the lead, really, especially out in the public, because, obviously, other, other dogs, vehicles driving around. So I guide around the vehicle on the lead, and um, generally what I do is I, I point to an area where I, want, where I wanted to check and then I work around the vehicle from there, all around the tyres, bumpers, lights, engine and all the way around. There's nothing on the outside. 
Time for the inside. There's nothing there either, yet the cops are still convinced Mr Wesley's got drugs. There's one place left worth a look. Round his house. We've had this guy before. It could be a possibility that this guy is a, a higher level dealer than, than, you know, the normal street dealer that we get. Back across town, the traffic cops are still hanging on the telephone. It is, yeah. It's Mike 171. While we were sitting there dealing with that driver, I just heard a motorcycle come up the outside of us. Even without his in-car gadget, PC Goddard can spot a wrong one. It's just a feeling you get. It's just not right. And two flashing red lights on his display confirm his intuition. It was flashing up with no insurance, notified off-road, and with no MOT. And the screen shows he lives just up the road. But the cops can't go anywhere until they've got an answer about the escort driver's insurance. Hello? <laughs> Hello? The thumbs up is good news all round. Lovely. OK, thank you. The escort driver's Bye. records were out of date. He is insured you. after all. He's free to go. It's about to uh, stop check a vehicle over. That's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, Em. And so are the cops. One six five is the piece of legislation which gives the police the power to seize unlawful vehicles, including bikes, even if they're parked up. We'll have that away, mate, can't we? Oh, I did. Yeah. As we were driving down the road, saw the bike parked up. It was still hot. It's parked on a stand at the side of the road. Chassis number. Knocked on the door, no answer. I kept knocking, going around the back of the house, knocking the door, no answer. Well, it's registered to this address. PC Goddard suspects the bike owner is betting that if they can't find him, they'll leave him alone. I said, Jason, I'm not happy. I don't want to leave it here. You know, he's obviously seen us and gone off. Hello, anyone in? Well, if you are in, I'm just letting you know we're going to take the bike because he's just seen it go past us. You can either come out and talk to us or we're just going to seize the bike and put it on a carrier. All right? The biker's gamble has backfired. The data on the MDT is not open to doubt this time. Goddard's having the bike away. Shall I just get the recovery rolling? Yeah. And we seize it. Seizing illegal vehicles is like shelling no, peas. No Police take more than 500 off Britain's roads every day. I just want to give it a couple of minutes. Me and my colleague, PC Daly, had 20 cars in four days for no licence and no insurance. And it was just basically them two offences and we were seizing cars left, right and centre. I even ran out of ink in my pen at one stage. I was writing so many tickets and that. The bike's going to be but another to add to PC Goddard's stats, even though he's not sure yet who to ticket for it. It's uh, registered to a uh, gentleman that was born in 1955, but it definitely weren't a gentleman that age riding past. Uh, one of his sons has got a full licence and one of them's a provisional, so maybe one of his sons has borrowed it. This is the paper, the seizure work, seizure paperwork that I'm going to poke through the door. You can pick it up any time. If the bike's owner is inside the house, he needs to come out quick. Have we got a key for it? No. Because his bike is going... going... gone. The suspected drug dealer, Mr Wesley, swears he lives a quiet life at home with his wife in Brighton. 
what he isn't aware of is that the cops know otherwise. He's moved out to a flat in Worthing. Through further intelligence that we received, we actually identified an address in Worthing where he was actually living. <laughs> and they're going to pay it a surprise visit en masse. In no more than a couple of hours, a small-scale army has been assembled, not only to search Mr Wesley's address, but also the flat beneath his that they suspect is being used as a drug den. And obviously, they wanted to hit the premises at the same time to stop any disposal of drugs. And this is all happening whilst we're still in custody processing Mr Wesley. Wesley may not be there, but the cops are expecting a number of his friends in the flat below. They're in for a bit of shock and awe, thanks to PC Stuart Woodford spearheading the assault. It's very difficult because you want to be fast, but you've got to be as quiet as you can. And we had a good 40, 50 yards to cover between the edge of the road from where the property could see out and the front door of the block of flats. Floor flat underneath Wesley's is the first to be hit. Who's the actual owner of the premises? Okay, we have a warrant here. And it's not for the first time. I'm going to search you further now, right? So if you've got anything sharp on you or anything you shouldn't have in your pocket, nothing's going to hurt myself on or anything, no? It's a citric acid which is used with drugs. You've got to look wrong, have you? No, you've got the cops seem to have interrupted an afternoon tea party in full swing, but their intelligence is smack on. It's not ordinary brown sugar they're putting in their cuppers. No, no, I've been on amphetamine for the last 20 years, and they're quite happy normally to leave me alone. So, uh, provided it's my own personal use and everything, um, every now and again they get uh, instructions from a higher being or whatever to make a, make a stand. In Mr Wesley's flat above, the cops have found they've got the place to themselves. Upstairs there were four officers allocated. Once we established that the property was clear, that means there's nobody in there. We then allocated rooms to search. As well as drugs, they're looking for anything to tie Wesley to the address or anything to show where he's got his money from. I've got a bag of... A quantity of white stuff's been found in the kitchen, but it's not something used for cooking with. Who is it? Becky? <laughs> what is it? Whatever it is. All right, just document where you found it, mate, all right? And what time you found it in your PMB. Yeah. It's a significant find, and along with some grass, shows Mr Wesley either has a bad habit or is indeed a dealer. <laughs> in his living room, they've found further incriminating evidence, which strongly suggests the latter. The living room was in Aladdin's cave when it came to paperwork, linking Mr Wesley to that address for several months prior to that. And possibly the best find of all. I was made aware that a key had been found under the doormats by the front door, um, which was a strange looking key. It's the key to the jackpot. Um, Basically, we found a safe hidden in the corner and if I show you what's in there, there's just thousands and thousands of pounds and what we believe to be a quantity of drugs. Ching ching. Not a bad afternoon's work. In the safe, as well as the heroin, there were other prescription drugs. There was Viagra, there was uh, several other. Um, Tamiflu was in there as well. Uh, it was like a hy hypochondriac's paradise. Okay. But I'll lock it down. So that... Back on there, so you know, the photograph, what you're putting back on. All right, that's how it was found. 
finding that amount of cash and that amount of drugs um, is a brilliant feeling. It's what every policeman joins for. At the police station in Hove, near Brighton, a phone call's come in from someone who's lost a motorbike from right outside their house. Right, so what happened then? What? It's from the owner of the bike seized yeah. by PC Goddard this afternoon. You panicked, yeah? What he said to me was he parked the bike up and then run over down the side of his house, over the back garden, and went to a mate's. Now, if I couldn't have traced him and didn't see the bike, I'd never have caught him. Hmm, that's good. What I'm going to do tonight, go round, report him for driving otherwise in accordance with a licence. Uh, if he hasn't got a licence, if he has got a licence, it would just be the straightforward, no insurance, and um, the no tax implication, which would be dealt with by DVLA. But we're going to go round there at quarter past seven, so he's got an hour, and then we can chat with him about his, uh, his little escape route that he used. Excellent. Lovely chaplain. I'm chuffed to bits about him coming forward. <laughs> In Sussex, on average, every single motorist is scanned by an automatic number plate reading camera 100 times a year. As well as fixed camera positions, the network also relies on mobile ANPR cameras built into police vehicles. In Pulborough, in West Sussex, PC film man has one in his car, which has just been set off. Basically, the vehicle went past us on the road in Pulborough and activated our system ANPR, which is inboard the car. It makes a, like a noise, like a, like a whooping noise, and then it comes up the briefest description, like marker for drugs or PNC intelligence. So you basically know on the scale of 1 to 10 how important it is. The information that's come up is high enough on that scale to warrant giving chase. No insurance and drugs. It could be another dealer doing his rounds. Uh, when I got up behind it, I could see from the rearview mirror it was a young lad. Um, I could see what sort of car it was. So, yeah, expectations high, but uh, he pulled over. If you just take a seat in the back and I'll just explain why I've stopped you. Like Mr. Wesley, the young lad doesn't resemble an archetypal drug peddler. There you go. All well done. Hey, basically what I've got on board is an ANPR system. Oh, yeah. He'll stand out there. Oh, it's right? come out no insurance. I've got my insurance certificate in the car. Oh, you've got it in their yeah. car, have you? They okay. Me over he there. doesn't resemble who he's named after either. Well, I asked him his name, proof of identification, um, and he informed me his name was Damon Hill. Damon, as in the famous driver. Fantastic. Lovely. That's your car, yeah? Pardon? It's yours. Yeah. Is it your, it's your mum's? mum's it showed he was insured, albeit on paper. Um, but my experience in paper documentation is sometimes it's not worth it, the paper it's written on. How long have you had it for? Only his insurance company will convince PC Man that Damon Hill isn't driving around uninsured. In the meantime, he needs to find out if he is a drug dealer. Uppermost in my mind is the drugs because you've got the preservation of that evidence. That's the sort of stuff that can go missing. And if he's got it in his pockets, when you'll talk to him in the back seat, it gets shoved down the back. So I'll deal with that first. Insurance is the second thing, really. Your car? Yeah. Everything in it's yours? Yeah. What's in the drugs grinder in the front? Oh, it's just a grinder. Is it just a grinder? Yeah, just a grinder. I'll give you the give it to you. No. Can you stay there? Oh, Man's found a grinder that could be used for cannabis. So it's just the grind here. Yeah, no. As soon as I've made myself happy with the evidence that there was cannabis use or possession in that vehicle, I searched it. Couldn't find anything. Searched him, searched all the clothes in the car, and uh, came across what I thought at the time was cannabis. But first impressions can be deceptive. In a green bottle, until I turned the bottle around and read it as parsley. Damon Hill's a rogue trader passing the green stuff off for grass. Smokes parsley, yeah? What's that for you? What, you gave us the kids think it was green? What did they think it was when they bought it from you? How old are they? So you gave that to kids pretending it was cannabis? Well, no, but... You just told me that you gave it some kids because they thought it was green, or cannabis. Did you sell it to them? 
God. He confessed to me that he showed it to the local kids. Obviously, one of them's got hold of the idea that he's dealing it. They've gone home, told a parent. The parents told the police. The police have put the mark on the vehicle. All because of parsley. Satisfied no real drug dealing has gone on, PC man is determined to find out if there's any real insurance on the lad's car. Hello, PC man. By calling his insurers personally. Hello. And the news is precisely what he suspected. When did that happen? The information was the certificate he provided wasn't worth anything because they'd cancelled it in their uh, database. And they told me that they'd informed the people at the address, informed them a reason why, hadn't heard any reply, and of course, if they're not hearing any reply, they cancel the policy. There is some bad news for you. Zurich have cancelled that policy. Why? Why? They cancelled it on the 10th of July because basically there was concern that who was the owner of the driver, either was it you or yeah, your Yeah, we mother? had a problem with it. It was, to, yeah. my mum put it, they, they, what happened was my mum said something and then they put it in the wrong name. But basically the what they've sent you is a category one disclosure notice. That's for basically sent to your mum. And that was sent twice, all right, since July. They've had no conversation if, with your if, mother. If they said, my mum would so have said something to me, do you know what I mean? Possibly not, I don't know. But basically because they haven't heard any information back from your mum, your policy is now not valid. They seem to think it's a game, but it's not a game. You're not insured. No well, up-to-date payment for the policy equals over. no insurance, which means Damon Hill's car is now going to be seized. Dad, Dad. If you're not insured, you know, you shouldn't be in a car. Driving is not a right, it's a privilege, isn't it? You work for it. Oh, hurry up, boy. This kid's on his way. But kids nowadays, they've got it slightly easy. Yes, the insurance premiums are high, but they're high for a reason. It's because they go out on the roads and act like idiots and crash. So if we can nip it in the bud straight away, perhaps others will learn a lesson from it. Nipping this one in the bud might not be that easy. Damon's mum and dad have arrived at some speed and they're none too happy. I tried to tell him what I was doing, why I was doing it, um, trying to calm them down and uh, told them why, but uh, they went ballistic at that. But they have cancelled the policy. They haven't? No, no they no, have. No. no, they have. What they did, all they did, they sent us a note. A note. Yep. I got a credit on my insurance, right? Yep. OK, no, on my, on my card, yep. for 900 quid. And I thought, what the hell is that for? No lesson from them, nothing yeah. whatsoever. Mm. Just a credit on my yeah. card, £900 put back in my card. Is when you receive something like that with a £900 rebate, you would think to yourself, what's that £900 rebate for? I wouldn't go, oh yeah, I'm still covered in insurance, I would question it. The incident has attracted quite a crowd. Before they move on, PC Man's got a few words of wisdom. If you sell parsley to kids, you're going to lose your car, yeah. Don't sell parsley. Thank you very much. All right, let's go and have a cup of tea. In Hove, PC Goddard and his partner PC Daly are going to pay the owner of the motorbike they seized a little visit. They want to get to the bottom of who exactly was riding the bike. I really, really don't like it if I haven't bottomed it out, and it, it bugs me. Earlier in the day, it appeared to PC Goddard the rider was a youngster, possibly one of the owner's sons. I suppose I thought, because it's a small bike, it would have been a young rider. It was just a suspicion. So I'll plan it. OK, fair enough. OK. That's why I'll run away. I'll run out of the back garden. If it transpires that you've been covering up for someone, it is perverting the course of justice and you will be arrested for that. I was driving the motor. All right, OK. 110% I'm driving the motor. When he admitted that he was the rider of the motorbike and that it wasn't insured, I thought, well, OK, if you're going to, you know, be an adult about it, admit the offence uh, and say to me that it was you and that's it, that's fine. 
that's a closure to that incident. Satisfied the bottom of the case has been reached and the man was riding the bike, it's mission accomplished for PC Goddard. When 999 calls come in, police operators have to make rapid decisions about how to respond. Had a, call from a, concerned neighbor. a report of a suspicious looking object in the high street in Horsham this evening is being treated as an emergency. They're able to transmit all the necessary information direct to the mobile data terminals inside the patrol cars at the push of a button. There's a strange object on a bench. It looks like a turnip with two eyes. Sorry? Responding, a traffic cop's PC man and his night shift partner, PC Mark Boterville. He's been with the police almost 10 years. Nothing much surprises him anymore. A member of the public's phoned up concerned because there's a strange object on a bench. Uh, it's described as a turnip with two eyes on it. Um, and there's something very spooky about it, apparently. So we better get there so quick. So we need to get there quick. Um, assuming my spine holds up from Phil's driving. Is it 999? It is a 999 call, yes. Right, well, we better get there. And we'd heard that call come in, and there have been some strange things happening in Horsham lately, so we thought we'd investigate it. We made there as fast as we could, because if the caller was distressed, other people would be. With the threat of a terrorist attack on Britain highly likely, and people being urged to call 999 if they see anything suspicious, there's always the risk of a few frivolous calls. People use 999 for things like ordering a taxi. Um, obviously, they're told very politely, it's not used for that. But on this, if somebody is legitimately concerned that it is a strange-like alien, we will treat it on their merits. Because it might be a dangerous Members object. of the public are walking past, ignoring the object. Oh, oh. Uh, as we pulled up to the location, we held back a little bit, just to, you know, make sure in our own minds that it was safe to approach this item. Stand by, stand by. Pet shop, there it is. <laughs> He's mine. Get off. The turnip with big eyes isn't a threat to national security at all. It's actually a character from South Park, the cartoon. <laughs> Where's November Victor? Where's Victor? At times like these, the local CCTV operators, <laughs> November Victor, Lovely. like to be kept in the picture. Oh, what exactly is that, then? If you could... Uh, Canvas opinion, please, in the office. Uh, we'll come up with a suitable name. That'd be great. I think we should call it Phil. Phil is coming quietly, which is more than can Absolutely. be said for a lot of their customers. Yeah, stick him in the car then. We'll have him. The mascot. A section mascot now. C section mascot. <laughs> That's someone's, someone's property. Well, Phil, I suppose his class has found property, so he's sitting at the police station uh, waiting an owner. Come and collect him. It's not just suspicious objects that test the police operator's patience. People who think they're lost can also. Near a little place called Pease Pottage, two ladies taking a walk have chosen to call 999 because they can't find their way home. With the help of the operator, PC's man and Boterville are trying to find them. There's an entrance on your left. On your left-hand side. Yeah. The next farm down is called the home farm. We can't find any phone numbers for it. We think that they're in one of those fields there. Hey, Roger, is it just a case they're drunk and lost? No, definitely not drunk. They're lost, very, very scared, It's a genuine emergency after all. And a stroke of luck, one of the women has got a mobile phone. Two females were out walking their dogs. It's very foggy that night and it got lost. And they rang up and said, we've taken the wrong path, we can't find our way back. We're surrounded by cows, we're scared. We're in a corner of a field, we don't know where we are. Now that sounds a little bit silly, but in fact that could be quite dangerous in those circumstances. Around that area there is bog marshes, um, barbed wire fences, streams. You know, you could fall, bang your head, become unconscious, you could die. A mobile phone can tell people you might be lost, but when you're in the middle of nowhere, it can't tell them where you are. They couldn't give any objects. There's no landmarks. 
There's nothing visible, no footpath signs. With the weather closing in, finding the women isn't going to be easy. Back in the control room, another 999 call has come in. This time, it's immediately apparent the urgent attention of the traffic cops is required. A caller is reporting that someone's in the process of stealing a Mercedes Sprinter van from right outside their house. PCs Goddard and Daly are in Brighton, a stone's throw away from where the caller lives. Van. Yep. What sprinter? Please ask for him to see if he's along, please. The girlfriend of the owner of the van had said that the van's just been stolen from outside the house, rung 999. And she said that her boyfriend's gone out and he's following the van. The boyfriend has jumped into a Ford Fiesta to give chase to his own van being driven off by the thieves. It's a question now of finding out where the van thieves have gone. Tango 303, make sure that goes straight to the NPR hot list. Putting the van on the ANPR hot list will ensure any camera it goes past picks it up. But the cops have got an even better way of tracking it, by mobile. And uh, is the control room still on the phone to the uh, gentleman driving? The driver of the Fiesta was on his mobile phone, giving us updates as he was following his van. It was like heaven. Really, you know, you're going through, you're getting constant updates and knowing where the vehicle is. It's not direct some just vehicle's been stolen, it could go anywhere. We know exactly the roads it's going on, and we're just trying to play catch up. The cops are heading in the right direction, but there's a complication. There may be two vehicles involved. My boyfriend is a blue Ford Fiesta, so basically we've got the same sprinter, a white Volkswagen, and the informant is a blue Fiesta. CCTV cameras have picked up the stolen Mercedes van. They clearly reveal it's in convoy with a smaller white van behind and also the owner in hot pursuit. But the knowledge that there may be accomplices involved in the theft has raised the stakes. The control room can no longer afford for members of the public to be involved. The offenders had come in a van, stolen his one, and the two vans had made off with his Fiesta behind. So he had like three vehicles in a in like a uh, a train. Unfortunately, the trains are non-stopper, and without it being followed, there's no telling where it's headed for. The cops are hoping to get its last known whereabouts directly from the owner. But he's not answering his phone. Pressing redial is the last hope. Hello there. This time they've got through to the owner, and there's an added bonus. He's ignored the control room's advice. Sussex Police, whereabouts, whereabouts is the vehicle now, please? I'm just, I'm, I'm at 827. Yeah. Up towards Lewis. Lewis. Go the round up before you turn left at the prison. Yeah. I'm just coming up to that hill at the 50 mark. The van's still in front of me. Okay, we're making our way up to you now. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll stay on the phone to you. Just stay there for a minute. Yeah, okay. Hotel Tango 303. And we have units assigned to this stolen vehicle to start making towards Lewis, please. Goddard and Daly are three miles away from the stolen van. They're going to have to fly. As soon as we got the call to say, we're going towards Kingston roundabout, put the blue lights on again, and I just kept my foot on the floor. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, don't, I never knew a BMW could go that fast. I remember looking down and know the speed that I'm doing. Now, it's a 70 mile an hour bit of road, and I know for a fact I was catching them at about 80 mile an hour, because I knew I was doing about 150 mile an hour. I felt I could justify doing that speed because at the end of the day I didn't want to put that gentleman at risk because they could have stopped at any time and gone back and you know if they felt threatened that he was there he, he could have been at risk 
So the quicker I get there and take over, which means he can back off, which means it's safer for us. How are we getting on there? Okay. Mango 303, can we get 900 to the area, please? 900 is the call sign for the police chopper. It's time to really fly. Okay, we're just coming up behind you. We've then turned into the same road, see him, see the van, see the other van, which he's in convoy with. To make sure that the driver knew we were there, because it's a big three and a half ton van, I've gone alongside it with the blue lights so it, he would have had no doubt in his mind that we were there. Stop. Behind the van, I think. Vehicle is currently uh, available to stop. 409 on the other The other vehicle, the VW, appears to be a caddy, is still travelling in the same direction. Obviously, both vehicles are failing to stop at this time. The vehicle's failing to stop, Roger. Get both vehicles continued to fail to stop. The, the caddy van was in front of the Mercedes and they were both going at very similar speeds. The, the caddy wasn't pulling away, but we were clearly visible. I mean, them lights are very, very bright. Once again, it's a matter of getting units set up ahead of the thieves in the two vans in order to puncture their tires. But one of the vans, the little VW, has cleverly decided the best way to escape is not to try and outrun the cops, but to let them overtake. Tango 303, um, the Volkswagen van, standby for index, half a kilo, five, six, has pulled off just uh, at the, one of the pubs in Offham, and we are still 8275, yeah. 49 miles per hour. Up ahead, the cops are ready with the bed of nails. There's another one. Yep, looks like I might have tire. Yep, looks More like help has arrived from behind and from a thousand feet up above. With its heat seeking camera, Hotel 900 has got the crooks covered. Stand by, vehicle slowing, offside, stand by, stand by, vehicle stop. There's surely no escape for the driver. Yeah, I've got the run, I've got the driver, he's up through the driveway of the house uh, on the side, down the side of the garage into the back of. It's one on camera. Yeah, just the one is in the rear garden of that property. Stand by. But with a wave of his magic wand. The man has performed the ultimate vanishing trick. Just completely disappeared. Completely disappeared. The helicopter said he went to behind this bush and the heat seeker couldn't get through the density of the trees. Yeah, I last saw him disappearing around the back of that garage towards that small shed. Can you get over back then? No, I'll go around the road. Well, you just sort of think, oh, I've got an end to it. We've got someone that's stolen a vehicle, followed it all the way through, got a good result, got it stopped, no one's injured. You know, the helicopter's above it, it's contained. I mean, we all watch the programmes where they can hide in the bushes for hours and the heat source gets picked out. But for some unknown reason, just luckily enough, it was that thick that they couldn't pick through and he just got away. It's going to be down to forensics to catch the driver. 
Unfortunately, the gloves he's left behind suggest that finding any DNA is going to be unlikely. And I was fuming. I mean, there's, there's just nothing you can do about that. PC Goddard is now pinning his hopes on finding the other thief, the driver of the small van that got away. And we thought we would go back to the registered owner of the VW Caddy. Because we thought, well, no one managed to stop the Caddy. The Caddy's not about. So we thought we'd go and have a drive up and down the road or possibly the pubs where it pulled off to and have a look. Somewhere north of Lewis, near Pease Pottage, another search is still in progress. Not for the missing van thieves, but for the two ladies who are out taking a walk. It's proper foggy out there. It's a real pea super. Gonna ring her back. Yeah. There's contact. Hello, can you see our lights at all? Are you heading in towards the trees? Come see the light. All right, I'll, I'll start walking towards you. Hello? <coughs> can you hear us? Walk into the light. Walk towards the light. <laughs> towards the light. We have a loudspeaker fixed in the car, and I specifically like using it because I like the sound of my own voice. Walk towards the light and you will be safe. This house is now clean. Can you hear us? You know, Mark was foolish enough to go around standing in all the mud. I was the one with the loudspeaker and the lights. Brilliant. Experience. Aha! There you go. There's, there's one. At last, two. the lost walkers have been found. Don't lose him. There's two dogs on leads pulling these two women out of a tree. There you go. Bits of branch and muck all over them. And one of them was drenched. Hello. It was just quite funny in a sort of like relieving sort of way. Right, if you just watch this fence, I'll take your dog for you. The farmer, whose land they've been tramping through, has turned up. He's seen the light as well. Hello there. Okay. Yeah, That's found good. him. We have got cats in that field there. Falling in a stream as well. Be careful, that's barbed wire. You're going to hurt yourself. Can you get your leg over? And he pointed out that about 100 yards in one direction, and there was a very, very deep bog. And if you go into that, you get stuck. I think it's coming out. Well, we've got cows in the next field. We're a bit excited. Well, I think. Yes, I, 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 I think. I, I think they. Yeah. I think they found that out. <laughs> Whose is this one? All's well that ends well. Yes, they've got dogs there. They'd go shooting. Wait, look at Phil. All that way, and I kind of kill him. Oh. Right then. Okay. Um, excellent. Do you need to get back to the main road? Uh, yes. Because we have no room in our car. Oh, well, <laughs> I can walk back to the house. That's no problem. I can go back on the land road. If you want. Would that be all right? Yeah. That'd yes. be marvellous. Exciting into a Friday night. All is not so well for PC Goddard and PC Daly after failing to catch the thief who vanished after crashing the Mercedes van. We hardly spoke coming back from Hayward Heath towards Lewis. We hardly said two words between us because we were both so frustrated by what had just happened. You know, it's, it's the worst thing when you feel as though you've got someone and, and then it just gets away. You like, you know, you just feel down. Resuming their search for the accomplice in the small VW caddy van is more in hope than expectation. Well, what we'll do is we'll go down a bit and I'll come back and I'll check about this pub. So I think there's another pub as well. There is some houses. Ah, oh, driveway there. Do you know what I think of the one there nearby? We checked both the pubs, no trace of the van. We were then trying to find the home address. Couldn't find it anywhere. So we decided to come out of Lewis, go into Offham, and then we were going to turn left to go towards Plumpton and go back to Hayward's Heath that way. Anyway, I'll See, I don't know, he pulled off there. PK56? That was it? That was it. Extraordinarily, they've chanced upon it, driving past them. Hotel Tango 303. Great. PK56, the VW caddy has just passed us. 
we turned round and then we just accelerated as hard as we could to try and catch up with this van, which we did. We are vehicle signalling. The van then turned right and then immediately left into a driveway which we didn't even know existed. This time, there's no chance of the driver making a run for it. Stand by. Um, we followed it, stopped with the van, and Jason jumped out and arrested the driver. For us to spot him and then go after him and then get him, we would, you know, it just made it all worthwhile. You know, we'd actually got a result out of it and got someone in custody from it, and he can be questioned about it in the morning. When he was questioned, the driver of the VW Caddy denied he had anything at all to do with the theft of the Mercedes van. Without any conclusive evidence, the police were forced to let him go. The man who pulled off the vanishing trick after crashing the stolen Mercedes van was also never brought to justice after the forensics proved inconclusive. But the valiant owner did get what was left of his van back. The bike rider, who tried but failed to do a vanishing act, was fined £350 and given six points on his licence for not having any insurance or a valid driving licence. The other white van man who was chased down by the traffic cops was sentenced to a total of 16 weeks in prison for stealing the vehicle. He also received a 12-month driving ban. Damon Hill, the young driver with a penchant for parsley, was reunited with his car after the charge against him of driving without any insurance was dropped by the CPS. Colin Wesley, the man who didn't look like a dealer, was found guilty of two counts of possession of drugs and two counts of possession with intent to supply. He was sentenced to six years in prison. Over £16,000 worth of drugs and cash were recovered from his flat. and the suspicious-looking turnip, now known as Phil, is still waiting patiently for his owner to come and reclaim him.